how, how do you approach teaching students entrepreneurship? What's the style? How do you even begin that as a topic? And mm -hmm. I sat through your classes and I sat through- You have to keep their attention though. But I really can't remember what I was told to get <laughs> this information, you know, to feel this way. Well, th that raises a great question um, that even transcends education. When, when, and it, it's it's about lifelong learning and innovation, and I'll explain that in a second. When I taught your class, which was mid mid 2000, 2010, right, mid to late yep. 2010s. maybe a little earlier than that. May, may have been. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to be kind to both of us, <laughs> <laughs> but it was. Uh, you know, it was it, the way things were taught were through case histories. Let's look yes. at what this company did. Let's yes. break it down and analyze it. Well, that's great, except people don't write case histories about many startups. And most startups don't make it. So mm -hmm. what we learn is we we all mm -hmm. we can study the case history of Apple, but we're studying the case history of Apple after it's a multi-million dollar company. We're not looking at all the subtle pain points that they went through early on and 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 so it didn't get taught yes right mm -hmm. and so i think i think myself and other people who taught entrepreneurship back then were building up maybe a sense of false expectations right mm -hmm. that that you could do this just by not making the mistakes that we studied in the case history when in reality there's a right. lot more, there's a lot more subtlety discipline to it that has to be mastered and a, a professor and a, and a serial entrepreneur himself out in Silicon Valley named Steve Blank understood this, 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 this dynamic. And he was asked to teach a course. Um, I believe it was at Berkeley or Stanford. I'm not sure which one he started first. He taught at both schools. And he began to step back and say, well, wait a minute, what are all the things that an entrepreneur needs to go through to be successful that are down at the detail level, not at the 30,000 foot level. And he built this process that, that, you know, has sort of two elements to it. One is called the lean startup, right? How mm -hmm. do I start a company with the minimal amount of resources? And then a, a process called customer discovery, which looks at nine different vectors to a business. How do I find who my target customers are? How do I really find them? I do it by interviewing, by going out and just talking to people, just like, mm -hmm. you know, a politician does. How do I find out mm -hmm. what their problems are? And how do I build something that solves their problems? How do I then figure out how I'm going to get it out into the marketplace? Because I'm just, you know, one or two person company. What partners do I need maybe to build the thing um, or, or, or to sell it? Um, you know, and 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 go, and he went through the, these nine quadrants, um, which is now called a business model. And what happened when he did that mm. was the emphasis shifted from a startup how to write a business plan. You know, a business plan that was a, you know, three hundred pages thick and very detailed, yes. and it was all BS, right? Mm -hmm. It was all guessing because you're a startup. How do I know yeah. where I'm going to be in five years? T to tell me about a, it. To building a business model that says, okay, here's how I'm going to go about building my business, and here's why I think it can work. Mm -hmm. And okay, and 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 so that became a a, a a much more easy, a much more structured way of of finding out is my business going to work. Before I even go out and start to to try and raise money and make commitment, right. and and it lets me, it lets me experiment within that process. So so let's say I'm building, you know, blue widgets, and I think that um, middle aged men are my target customer. Well, I go out and I talk to middle aged men, and I talk to them about what problems they have with widgets, and I find out oh, middle aged men don't have a problem with with, with blue widgets, you know. So where am I going to look next? Well, let me try, um, you know, men in their 20s to 30s who are living in cities. Well, okay, I do. There's where I find the problem. And now I can be much more targeted, much more precise in what I'm building, who I'm building it for, mm -hmm. and in going out and getting investment and saying, I know who my market is, right? Whereas before mm -hmm. it was take a dart and throw it and and hope on both sides, the investor and mm -hmm. and and the startup. Okay. So we're much more precise with this model. And so that's what we teach in school now. But the, okay. the cool part is it's not just a, an academic exercise. That's what venture capitalists will use now. The mm -hmm. National Science Foundation has a program called i which the University of Maryland has been a big supporter of and is deep, uh, in, in, deeply involved with it. 
They use that process. So what's happened is we now have a language of the entrepreneurial process that before it was like the Tower of Babel. We were all saying different things and and, and it meant different things to different people. Now we're all talking the same language. And so I can I can teach that. And when you get out and you go use it in the real, real world, the people you're going to interact with are going to understand that language because they're speaking the same language. Hmm. Wow. Wow. A lot of stuff you said right there gave me different ideas. Right. <laughs> that I'm going to utilize. Because <laughs> I'm, writing, I'm, writing, I'm, I'm writing a plan right now. And uh, I know my target market, but can I fine tune it? Yes, you can fine tune it. And then why that target audience needs you. So, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. if you think about it, we're all human beings, right? And and to, to, to my mind, business has one purpose, to solve somebody's problem. Yes. If you're not solving a problem for somebody... Why should they buy what you sell, right? Yeah. What's what's their motivation to do it? And so the more I understand who that target segment is and what those problems are, and the more emotional those problems are, the more urgently they want to buy my product, right? Mm. Um, and so so talking, but but there's no way to, to get data to do that. Data doesn't buy products, mm. right? Human beings buy products. And so you got to yes. go out and just sit down with them and say, Tell me, but, you know, but that's the basics of life. You have to go that's out it. and network. You have to speak to other people, you know, stop hiding behind that data. And we're in a world, even though we have all this data, the data is skewed. We have yeah, data, we is. have AI, but then tomorrow something happened out there that you missed out on because you weren't living life amongst the people. Amongst yeah. the people. And, 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 and as fast as technology is changing, people are changing too. Yes, Absolutely. Absolutely. Every yes. day, you know, because if we're all lifelong learners, well, mm. we have to change as we, we learn more. And so our needs are different. But, you know, we can get gobs of data. As you said, it's out there everywhere. So much data that it's overwhelming. It is. What we can't, what, what data isn't really good at is, is understanding human need. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, it, at a micro level, at a, at a level of, you know, what does a certain segment of our population, whether that's a business segment or a consumer segment, what are they struggling to achieve and how can my business help make their journey easier or better mm -hmm. or more effective or more efficient? And if I can figure that out, you know, now I've got a straight line to my, my product is solving a problem for this group of people. And right. that's huge. Mm -hmm. That's true. And Kwana, I know I've been asking a lot of questions. Kwana, do you have a question for Bill? I, I know. <laughs> yeah, I want to know, are you are you into sci-fi? Am I what? I'm sorry, I missed that. Are you into sci-fi, like science fiction? Not as much. With as all the knowledge think. that you have, is it like? Well, you know, it's an interesting question. I've, I've never, I've never, um, some science fiction I enjoy, some of it just scares me. And I figure life is too short <laughs> to be scared. But what I've noticed <laughs> over the last five or six years is things that once were science fiction are becoming real. Yes. You know, through, through technology. And so I guess I, I need to pay more attention to it than I than I than I have. Mm -hmm. um, because some science fiction writers have proved to be futurists, right? Accurately at least setting a, a stage for what's going to happen. What's the time, I, I, yeah. I feel like that's true with George with Lucas and Star Wars. I mean, like I feel like we're doing Star Wars things right in front of our eyes that he was mm -hmm. dreaming about and he created a fan base of those people that actually, you know, I want to create that. Yeah. Yeah. And, well, think about, not, just think uh, about, just think about people going into space. Yeah. You know, 10, 15 years ago, oh, we're going to go into, we're, we're going to go to space for fun. Right. Oh, yeah. Right. And right. now we're doing it. You know, now, now yeah. we're for trips, but pe they're, they're taking people up and they, who would have conceived that was the realm of science fiction 10, yeah. 15 years ago. Right now it's the realm of, Reality and space tourism is now a market that people are starting to look at and figure out how do we, we do. That. I'm going to stay right here, Bill. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I don't care what's going on up there. That just, the that just reminded why... me of the Titan, and that, that just scares the life out of me. Which yeah, one? That's the we one that went fix... underwater? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That absolutely. was scary. That had to be yeah. a scary moment. But, you know, there's enough frontiers here on Earth. It's not exactly. Yeah. That you know, we like our brain. Yeah. We've, 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 mapped, we've mapped DNA. And so now we are on, on, a, on, a, on a path to cure diseases at a rate that we've never been able to do before. Yes. Um, and, and now our brain 
you know, mental yeah. health is now coming into the forefront. Yes, and what triggers our thinking? Well, neuroscience is sort of uh, this field that's starting to understand that. And and so and then you know, just the environment is is a big enough. To, we, we won't we'll have to go to another planet if we can't figure out. You know, <laughs> what we're going to do. So there's enough to yeah. work on. <laughs> yeah, right here, right here. So that, that was that was a great question, Quad. I never asked though, Bill. What do you do to unwind? What is, what do you do to have fun to kick it? Oh wow. Well, at, at my age, you know, um, it, it, it it's it's not as adventurous as I think it, it it once was. I guess there's three or four things. One, um, I and it's going to sound very techy. So mm -hmm. one, I love photography. Um, okay. and oh, yeah. you know, with a camera, which as you can imagine, um, they're sophisticated computers now. Come a long way. Yeah, yeah, and it's and 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 yet, you know, I look at some of these images and I I, I think that's art, right? We're using mm -hmm. a, a technical instrument to create beautiful art. Not all, I mean a lot of it's not, but but some photographers <laughs> who are just who are just, you know, really good composition lighting shadows subject it's just brilliant um mm -hmm. so, so that's one thing for exercise i bought a i had some surgery in my leg uh recently so i bought a, a, an electric bike so ah. which has proven to be amazing you know because i can pedal to build up my leg as much as i can but when i can't go any further and my wife is a mile ahead of me i can just <laughs> put, put it in battery mode and, and, and keep Zoom going up. so um uh, and then, you know, getting outside, hiking, you know, fresh air. I, I, I've been reading lately about all this change that we're talking about, the pace of change, what that does, what that's, how that stresses out our minds and our bodies. Mm -hmm. And just the sound of birds. Um, yes. Uh, the smell of flowers, just what are invigorating and, and you know, refreshing uh, that does to our, to, our, to our bodies and to our psyche. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to get out more, more as I can. My yeah, and then the internet. Me. I'm always exploring, always reading stuff about yeah. science and, and, and the internet. The, the, the thing is, and this is one of the interesting things about teaching. When you're teaching um, young people, they are, you know, perpetually inquisitive and mm -hmm. they challenge you all the time. And so you have to stay young mm -hmm. and you have to stay, um, you know, aware of things. When you stop teaching, yeah. all of a sudden you're in a void. Like, wait a minute, that stimulation hasn't happened yet. Right. Um, so, Mm -hmm. Um, what what do I do now? <laughs> you know? Right. Mm -hmm. I love it. Good. Yeah. So no Diddy well, card. And I, and I should I should I should mention I listen to a lot of podcasts. It's a, okay. Oh, uh, really? so, so now you have a new favorite one. <laughs> we have over three hundred. I do absolutely. <laughs> I do. I I I learn more from podcasts. Uh, I think to to the point that I actually in my class I started using podcasts. You know, instead of reading articles, there are some podcasts um, about entrepreneurship. There's one called How I Built This, yep. um, Just which is a that. great podcast for entrepreneurs. Another one called Freakonomics, which is derived from a book, which really oh. goes into a lot of very interesting detail about how industries and products and people evolve. Um, so mm -hmm. it's a good teaching tool for my, my academic discipline as well. I love that. I love that because podcasting is the way of the future and it's so much more than what people assume it to be. It can yeah. be pretty much almost anything. And uh, one thing we were ahead of the curve when we've been doing video podcasts and audio podcasts, and now people yeah. are just talking to me about, Hey, I'm going to do a video. Pod. I'm like, I've been doing that for a long time now. So it's all good. <laughs> I, I love that. And, and then people are telling me they're putting this into schools and things of that nature. So mm -hmm. I am super into this right here, this realm, and love and love that you like that. That's great. Uh, I don't want to keep you long, Bill. You gave us a ton of information, and I also, you know, like to have our guests ask us any questions they may have, and then I have like maybe one or two more questions. And if Quana, you have a question as well, you know, and then we could head on out. But Bill, uh, did you have any questions for us? Yeah, let me start with Quana, just, just as a because uh, uh, there's a question she, if that's something you raised earlier, Quanta, which is. You know, in your work, you're a content creator, but do you see yourself as a content creator? In other words, when you're when you're working on your performance, are you thinking about what channels do I distribute this to? How do I how do I get this out to 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 a larger audience? How do I how do I think of my work not just as the creation itself, but as content that needs to then be distributed to build a broader audience? 
Um, no, I, I literally started by just not caring. So a lot of my followers, a lot of people that know me that ask me to host shows or do comedy is just because I never changed who I was. And Santi will tell you, even as a kid, I was just loud and I was always just me. So I would be basically selling myself. So I don't think of myself as a content creator. I just think of me bringing what I have to the table. Um, and that way I'm not on anybody's level but my own. And now that I've started making a few dollars out of it, I've um, moved forward into trying to find my demographic, what fits me best, who's really watching me, who really wants to hear me and what do they want to hear. Um, and a lot of times I learn more from my mistakes than my successes. Mm. Um, I've learned that, you know, you can't just wait for your uncle and your aunt to hit the like button. It's going to probably be somebody you don't know that you probably, you know, those hit dogs holler. And so I'll randomly put something out there and that might go viral and something that I poured my heart into trying to be a content creator can flop. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I just maintain being who I am on all platforms. So no matter where you see me, that's her being her. She's always going to be her. So I, I don't think of myself as a content creator. I think of myself as the content. Mm. Okay. So you, you, you would put yourself more in the, in the realm of creative artist than yes. content creator. Mm. Yes. Mm. I like that, that better too. I might have to write that down. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> creativity is, 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 you know, one of the things that's happened um, as a result of all of our digital technology is we're losing mm -hmm. our sense of creativity. Yeah. And um, I'll give you a great example. You may appreciate this. I was listening to a podcast on Freakonomics about artificial intelligence uh, a couple of weeks ago. And this this researcher at Columbia University said, I'm going to test artificial intelligence because people keep saying it's going to take over who we are and how we are. So she said the most simple thing is to tell a joke. I'm going to try and teach artificial intelligence to tell a joke. Wow. And she said it was a miserable failure. Right? right. The only thing she could get was sort of some marginal knock knock jokes because it can't read someone's face. And yes. it doesn't have the experience of embarrassment and yes. some of the things that make good creative comedy. And I was just, I, that stuck with me and it just fascinated me. Um, and so I guess it means that, that, you're, that your world and your industry has a lot more longevity maybe than some, some other industries do. Right. It, it, right. it, it does. It does, uh, Bill. I was going to ask you another question. And that's great that we went to this uh, talk about content creation. How is college taking on content creation as a business, as entrepreneurs? Because I, I have friends of my own, Quan and I, we share a friend who is living off of content creation. He does yeah. nothing other than this. And then he's introduced me to other people that are millionaires. And he started by watching me and me yeah. not making any money, me not doing anything, just being myself. He's like, I've been watching you. Just do it. And you you do it effortlessly. And I'm like, because I'm not doing it for anything. I'm just being myself. That's it. And after that, he just he soared. Took he took off. How, how was, is that, is that, is college even, you know, the, the college realm even thinking about that and as business? Is that even a thought? Um, well, hmm. there are some areas that historically have done that. Like if you think of communication, you know, film and media, photography, okay. Um, even journalism, right, is, okay. a, is a form yes. of content creation. Um, in the realm of business, there are a lot of universities that have understood that we need to integrate the idea of um, of, of the creative side of that with the business mm -hmm. side of that, right? Because digital sits in the middle, and digital is both a technology and it's a distribution platform for for content. And in my little world of taking pictures, you know, the content itself is digital, <laughs> right? And now we can do artwork with AI. We can have AI just create art. It's not great yet, but yeah. it's getting better. And so that's digital. And so I think universities are, are seeing that. But where I think there's a gap that is slowly starting to close is the idea of performance art. 
mm-hmm. like comedy, like dance, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. um, like singing, you know, music. Um, those are all performing arts. How do you start to think of that as as content, right? Mm-hmm. And and artists have been doing that maybe without even acknowledging it for a few years. Absolutely, they do an audio version and then they'll do you know a video. MTV became uh, you know uh, the the center of you know of, it of content. So, but but then the third part is how do you think of it as a business? Yes. Right. How do I not just say, well, I just want to get my song out there everywhere, but how do I do it as a business? So I'm actually making money off of that. Exactly. Right. And there are a few schools. American University has done this quite well. Um, that's actually started a program in the business school called business and entertainment. And so if you see yourself as as interested in the entertainment industry, whether as a performance artist or maybe you want to be a set designer or maybe you um, just want to work in the field, in the business side of the field of entertainment, they've got a, a degree you can now get in business entertainment. Wow. UCLA, as you would expect out in LA, mm-hmm. was I think the first school that had that. And now other universities are starting starting to 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 pick up on that. That's great. And, and by the way, I should mention, Santi, that is the most popular major in the business school, is business yeah. entertainment. You told me I got to really? reach out. I got to reach out. I got to get there and speak to someone because- uh, Really? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. It's it's it, it, it's it's popping. It's you know. I love the fact that I threw my full sail degree in with my business degree. It allowed me yeah. to get here and be creating what I'm creating right now. Uh, right. You know, I'm 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 so blessed and so happy to have met people like you as well that gave me that idea. Gave me made me keep pushing forward because I'm here now. And yeah, and you push me so. And I pushed you. I pushed you hard. I know I pushed everybody <laughs> hard. But you see the people I was speaking to. This is one yes, of I do. You know what I mean. So <laughs> this is why I did that. And and Bill, one of Understood. the greatest, one of the things that you touched on is the uh, by entrepreneurs is the stick to itiveness, the don't give up. Like that is to me like super key because you're going to fail a lot. But you said ten thousand yeah. times that it did not work. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's going to happen. But if you keep pushing, you keep knocking. For me, I'll tell you something that just recently happened that made me go, this is going to happen. One of the, uh, one, uh, we had a uh, financial firm on our show. Mm-hmm. They reached out to us. I'm speaking to the head of PR. K Street? Yes, K Street. Uh, and, you know, that's awesome. And then I'm speaking to other uh, real estate firms out here in the market. And I'm speaking to my local uh, government. And I know it's there. Now I just have to make that story better. You know what I mean? Make the yeah. story better. So I'm going to pick your brain, Bill. I'm going to shoot you some things at times when we're on LinkedIn. <laughs> okay. Well, I didn't we'll get to get ask there. you my question, my question of you, Santi, which is, um, I, we talked a little bit about this when we spoke last time, but you know, as you see your world evolving mm-hmm. and you have, I think, um, invested a lot of intellectual capital in looking yeah. at the various sides of, of not just podcasting, but of entertainment, of production. Mm -hmm. Um, So you have a much, I think, richer, more diverse understanding of many elements within the business, but how do you see that world changing over the next five to 10 years? And how does that affect your plans for your business? Great question, Bill. So I want to say this one. I saw AI coming back when I was in college. I actually spoke with Dean, when we spoke about Dean Chang yeah. and the, the the that department there. And even with Trevor, I remember Trevor Young, I knew that the computer can do, was going to get involved more in entertainment as far as video editing, audio, something. It was going to do it and we're here. But anyway, in five to 10 years, I feel now the manager of an organization could be sitting in his mom's basement and simply, but, but it's very similar to what happened with Silicon Valley. You know what I mean? It's just not going to be there only. It's going to be in India. It's going to yeah. be uh, China. It's going to be Japan. I feel like also people have to start focusing on more localized. I think localizing is going to make the root stronger. If right. That makes everyone. And then now the city can flourish. The community can flourish because everyone is now a fan within that realm. And then we can build 
what entertainment we like. Like, for instance, go-go music in D.C. It should be in the world. I think the yeah. world should be hearing this because it's amazing percussions, the way they create the sounds. And I've learned to appreciate it. Like, the story oh, of how it began, all of it. But it's, 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 I feel like it's his local, but it has yeah. not grown because of locally, we haven't just tightened it up a little bit amongst yeah. ourselves. And it's happening now as we get older, but that's what I believe is going to happen in five or 10 years. And how is, how is it going to affect me? I feel like because I've, figured out the localization quite early, I see where we're going to be in 10 years. I feel we're going to be huge, bigger than we are because this is bigger than myself. It's bigger than Quanta, what we've created with All Gas, No Breaks. We're already branched off into a new show. Uh, we're going to be mm -hmm. branching off into a new media firm. And I'm watching yeah. my peers do it as well. And it's succeeding in New York. Uh, so I know my business is going to do well. And because I've localized and the youth and the, the adults and, you know, everyone from within the region are flocking to us finally, uh, my children could hopefully run it or Kwana's children could run this. You know, that's what I see in the next five to 10 years. Maybe one of them. I hope so. I don't know about it. the rest of them. Or sell it and become billionaire. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you, your, your answer um, points to what a good entrepreneur you are. Because if, if you think about that idea of localization, there's a void there, right? I mean, Huge. in the old days, television, we had local television stations that had a lot of local content. Now mm -hmm. it's down to just a, a little bit. You know, we're covering a lot of national stuff and it's national mm -hmm. stuff. Maybe mm -hmm. In the morning and on weekends, we get some some local stuff. Even newspapers, you know, the Washington Post, at least in this region, and, and mm -hmm. newspapers in small markets are going under all the time. You know, they're covering big national issues, partly because we're in D.C., but newspapers are leaving a void in the local market. And even radio stations are yes. so pre-programmed in the music that they play that there's not a lot of localization where you really get to know people in a local market. Right. In a way yes. where you can have an, a, an emotional connection with them. And yes. so brilliant. I, I love your answer. I think that's exactly right. That's that that's. One day I woke up, and, and I believe in your class, I made a couple with that idea a long time ago because I I remember the case studies, Bill, when you brought up the case studies. When you said the case studies, I remember that's how you told us <laughs> as it was. <laughs> we used yeah, to love them. Highlighted. Yeah, I had to remember, no, because my wife and I, before we went to class, because sometimes he'll give it to us, and we would have a debate about, you know, how that business did and what they should have done and how could we do that when we bring it into, you know, pull it into ourselves? Nice. So, yes, a uh, long time ago, I knew, uh, I, I always tell Quanta this story. I hate when I meet people and they say, I this artist had to leave here to be well known or we don't work together here. So one right. day I said, when everybody up and left us and it was just me and my partner before Quanta came along and my other partner named OG, uh, I said, I don't want to be that guy. Why don't we be the guys that do work with everybody? that mm -hmm. does work with everybody locally, that yes, to me, you are a big star already. I don't care yes. what the world yes. is saying. You're yeah. big here, you're big. You're me. huge. And it's been working. It's been working. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it's not because that's what we want for the business. It was just what we wanted for the, the area. I want it for this area. This area saved my life and I owe it. You know what I mean? So that's why yeah. I'm focused on it. Well, and, 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 and that, that's the other point, right? We're, you're fortunate that you're in an area. DC is a very rich, mm. diverse culture, but it hasn't been discovered the way New York or LA yeah. or yeah. even right. Mexico, some of those places. Yeah. It is a, it is this little gem waiting to just. I mean, they know us for politics, but they don't think of us as much about the culture here, the music. Yeah, right. um, and Baltimore is right around the corner. Yeah, and Richmond is right around the corner. You have so much. Philly, Philly is two hours away. Yeah. So much is close to here and you can enjoy, but you can be in such different cultures within seconds. But if yes. someone can encompass all of that, and that's what I feel that we are doing, yeah, you know, we're going to skyrocket. And, and it's been, it's, it's finally working. <laughs> finally I'm so working. glad to hear that. Cause I know you have paid your dues to get there. Bill. Um, <laughs> yes, I have. No, uh, but, but that, by the way, that's the other thing that makes a good entrepreneur's experience, right? Yeah. <laughs> Having known, Oh, if I do this, I burn my hand. So I'm not going to put my yeah. hand in that yeah. that helps you significantly. That's why a lot of investors want to know that the CEO of a company they're going to invest in has experience, whether they've succeeded or not, that they have had experience and can talk about that experience. So you've paid your dues, and I'm, it's just really rewarding 
and and gratifying to see you at this great place now where you're really starting to, you know, um, see it come together, both the product, yeah, yeah. the revenue and life, your life itself, you know, all those things yeah. starting to fit together. So I'm, I'm just so proud of you and so excited for you. Yeah, I can't wait. I can't wait, Bill. We're going to push it further because I'm working on the business plan currently. And once it's complete, I'm most definitely, if you're up for reading <laughs> something, yeah. uh, I'll, I'll most definitely share with you and also my par whatever paraphernalia I have. Uh, because, yeah, it's, it's, time, it's expansion time now. And uh, we actually have the story. We have the followership. We have everything they told me I did not have uh, yeah. to, to present and gain what I need. So now I'm here. So let's see what yeah well uh, it's time to it's time to take it to the next level i know you're already thinking that way because you are an entrepreneur you've been that way since i've you've had that entrepreneurial <laughs> mind since, since as long as i've known you it's um, the new yorker in me bill yeah it's, me. It's, it's a real thing when people say new yorkers are hustlers yeah it's a real thing and you know you know bill you know he's got to ice the eskimos yeah, well, it's also why the Knicks can beat the Sixers and and, and hopefully go. Oh ahead. man, that's good. I, I, I said I said that so I could pull you in because I know you love basketball. Yeah. These playoffs are amazing. My Miami Heat beat Boston, as yeah. I you know I wasn't I wasn't afraid of. Tyler Hero woke up. Uh, the Lakers Nuggets uh, battle going on over there. What do you think is going to happen there? That's the scary one. What do you think? I think the Nuggets. I, I don't know. They're just the, the the Lakers. Just seem to be. I mean, they're two points away every night. You know, they just. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's a it's hard to explain that because mm -hmm. talent by talent, player by player, if you put age aside, the Lakers sure seem like they have pretty good depth of talent, right? LeBron yeah. and AD. Um, but they just can't seem to get past that one, those two three points that that they need. So I kind of think the Nuggets are gonna going to come out of that thing um having having won unfortunately because i did i love watching lebron play he and this year he's been amazing i mean Dude, he's amazing. he's got a three-point game like he's never had before and, and for the age and we got i always have to talk about that age 39 so 30, I think. yeah that's crazy and how many more years do we get to see him perform at that level right? i don't know because my knees are already popping yeah <laughs> and so i want to see i want to see him win one more you know with the lakers um but Good run, know, this, may, this may not be the year unless there's some amazing comeback. Well, well New York is taking Philly out. Philly's done. Philly's. I Philly hope so. Can't. I haven't looked oh, at the yeah. score. They're playing right now, I think. I haven't looked at the score. but Okay. They're, they're taking them out. But, you know, I don't want to keep you looking. I, I know you want to watch that game. Oh, no, no. no. That wasn't to rush. I was just <laughs> Okay, okay. No problem. No problem. <laughs> I'm, I'm hoping. <laughs> you know, as a Knicks fan, the suffering is goes oh. back a long way. Yeah. We had this story, Bill. They broke yeah. my heart. They broke my heart. It's why I'm in Miami with Pat Riley and Zoe. And uh, we're going to take Boston out. Boston, I, my cousins are Boston fans because I have family that lives in Boston. And during this time, there's, we battle. They, we, they, we, we, we battle hard online. So you may see some crazy posts for me that I put up there. That's to my cousins. <laughs> but you know, it's amazing. If they can do that without Jimmy Butler, what a story. Yeah, I mean that's that's yeah. like what the Knicks are doing without Julius Randle. Only I think I would think Jimmy Butler is even more important to the to the oh yeah because of his past record in the playoffs. Yeah, so that would be incredible. Yeah, well, it, it, and if it does happen, it's all about the coaching. And I'm a I'm a Spolster fan. I'm a huge Spolster yeah. fan. I really respect him as a coach. Uh, um, absolutely. Fantastic. Fantastic. By the way, have you watched? Have you gotten to check out Swagger yet? No, I did not. It is in my list of. Bill, I've come to, I'm at this point now in life when I am like, my one of my buddies, Van, I talked about the, the, the content creator. He's like, Santi, I don't even watch television. And I don't want to get there because I like being up with pop culture. Yeah. But mm -hmm. to find the time now with writing plans now and pitching and you got to get the right amount of sleep because entrepreneurs yes. have to understand. Uh, I like to let everybody know sleep and eating well is awesome for an entrepreneur because if you don't, why have it if you're sick and then yeah. you die? Because you you're going to go through a lot of stress and you got to take care of yeah. your body. Can't like afford it. Like an athlete does. But the reason I think you'll love Swagger is it is a fictional version of KD's mm -hmm. story growing up and playing AAU basketball in this region. So it's local. I have it has to watch that, it. That, it's really, it's really, well, the KD is one of the producers. So um, ah. uh, it's, uh, you know, it hits home. You, yeah, I have to watch it. I told I told my wife about it. So when I do that, that's how I get her to watch it with me. We could binge it together. 
<laughs> yeah, good. Let her let her be the driving force. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's how I do it. And she's like, did you not watch it? Didn't Bill tell you to watch it? I'm like, <laughs> there you okay, go. Right, you're right. I got to do it. Uh, so, Bill, thank you so much for being on the show. We learned a lot from you. I hope to have you on the show again. I tell that to all our guests because it's about growing with each yes. other and, and learning yes. more from you. And I know you have a vast amount of knowledge. And if you're up for it, Bill, we will always love to just bring you on and maybe even ask Huge. you more questions. And then maybe even sometimes I, I'm even trying to connect my guests with other guests that would not have ever spoken to one another. But yeah, just to see why not? What that conversation will look like because you helped me. I can only imagine what you could do for someone younger and on the ride. Yeah. Well, anytime you like. And and I, I love to help people get into entrepreneurship because I think it is, you know, I think it's 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 worth the human side and the business side of people come together just like, you know, special forces or professional mm -hmm. athletes who mm -hmm. really tested in all levels. Um, so anything I can do, as you know, anything you ever need, let me know. I'm happy to be a guest again. I'm happy to talk to other people. I have a couple of students who at some point might be interesting, regional area, the area it's entrepreneurs, former students um, who uh, one in particular, I think might be a really interesting guest. Great. Um, so just let me know what I can do anytime you want. I'm up for that it. That would be awesome. Bill, my last question that we love to ask everybody on the show is your top three motivators in life. Three things in life that get you going, that make you not give up and keep waking up, you know, ready for the next day. Wow. Okay. So the first one I think is curiosity. I just, you know, and I guess first in a world where it changes so much, that's good, right? I can, there's no yes. to satisfy that. These aren't in order, by the way, just the first thing that comes to mind. Second is family, you know, just mm -hmm. always wanting to, to, to take care of my family, um, both my immediate family and my extended family, which I think are students and other people who are sort of in this, I've been fortunate enough to come into the sphere of my life. Um, and, and I guess the third thing, um, more, um, more recently has been this country, right? Mm. I think it's imperfect in so many ways. Um, but there are so many good things about it that I would hate to see it be dismantled um, or or badly damaged because I think we're just at the yeah. beginning of progress. Yeah. And so I guess I feel like I've become more patriotic, um, more optimistic, um, you know, in, in a way that I ever and I think about this more more than I ever have uh, previously in my life. So those are three things that kind of that kind of. Mm -hmm drive me in and all of them require the fourth thing which is optimism right which you mentioned mm -hmm. Santi. Mm -hmm. if we're not optimistic about where we are in life then why are we even you know why, why what, what are we doing we're, yeah. we live in a place where there's so much opportunity so many great people the world is changing it's going to change so dramatically for the better if we if we nurture our democracy um, mm -hmm. and other democracies i think that mm -hmm. we're going to end up you know just, just the next 20 years are just exciting to me Nice. Thank you, Bill, for that. Thank you. That's so dope. Very good. Very good answers. Very, yes. very dope guest. Very dope individual. I, I, yes. I, had to, I had to get you an all gas, no breaks, Bill, uh, because I knew that uh, the people need to hear from you because you, you're, you're the man. And uh, thank Absolutely. you for being on the show. I really appreciate it. If you could let everyone know your name again, a little bit about what you do again, once again. And uh, Kwana, you do the same after Bill, and then we can start rolling out, guys. Sure. Um, yes, I'm Bill Bellows. Um, I was an entrepreneur for uh, about 25 years in Silicon Valley and in Northern Virginia, uh, and then moved into teaching where I taught entrepreneurship in the business school uh, at American University for the last 12 years. And prior to that, I taught entrepreneurship in the engineering school at the University of Maryland. Um, and now I just work and counsel various young entrepreneurs trying to figure out how to put the pieces together to build a successful business and a successful life. Mm -hmm. um, to reach me, uh, the easiest thing is my email, which is bill.bellows at gmail.com. Bill Bellows, everybody. And the lady to the, at yeah. the top, you're on the top of me right now, uh, Kwana, on my Zoom. So <laughs> lady up top, then I'm going to, you know, I'm hooking up when I edit this. No worries, no worries. It's your girl, Kwana Valen. I am Valen Diva Kwana. And I am Quanah Valen. I'm also a Soul Sister TV on YouTube. I am on Snapchat. I am on TikTok. 
I'm everywhere you want to be, and you can always find me at All Gas No Break. Yes, yes. And Quada, did you get? Did this give you chills? Did you get motivated? Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm doing more listening for the first time <laughs> than talking. So, <laughs> yeah, I actually got something out of it. Um, yeah, and I feel a little bit more motivated too. And sometimes when you say it, it makes more sense than when you think it. I'd say. So, I'm ha- all I'm gas, happy no to- break, baby. All gas, no break. I'm happy to have you here. And I'm Super Saiyan Santi. You can catch me at Super Saiyan Santi. But most importantly, at All Gas, No Break Podcast. Thank you to everyone that's been subscribing, tuning in, sending messages. I love the community. The community has been fantastic right now. We're at 1.9 million people this month. We've reached 1.9 million people, and we are super ecstatic. And then 2.9 million views uh, just last week on YouTube. So we appreciate everyone. We're finally at this level. As you can see, we're talking to more bosses. Keep tuning in. Keep subscribing. Shout out to Red Crocs. Shout out to OG Frank. Shout out to at Rex Corollas, all those guys. The one and only. uh, The one and only. And we're going to keep rocking and rolling. Thank you so much, Bill. Thank you, Connor. Well, all right. Say sweet talk. What do you know about that all gas, no break? Man, I heard about that all gas, no break. I don't think they gonna let me on. I ain't got a damn thing to talk about. Boo, they talk about everything. This is all gas, no break. Don't step on the break. Don't step on the break. Huh? Well, I'm my boy.